Welcome to the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast, where you'll learn the secret sauce, what it really takes to build a thriving mortgage business doing what you love, without relying on cold calling or annoying realtors. And now, let's join your host, Doran Aldana. Hey, what's up, everybody? Doran Aldana here with the one and only Terry Core for a very special guest interview podcast episode for our Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast, because what we're going to talk about is how Terry turned her annual income into her monthly income. Yes, you heard me right. Her annual income into her monthly income in just three months from I can't afford it prison, from stress, freak out prison to landing on Planet Prosper, making that her permanent zip code and making more money in one month. She used to make it an entire year in just three months. So I know it sounds crazy. I know it sounds like hyperbole, but by the end of this interview, you will know it to be true. And we've got the one and only Terry Core to share her story today and to have you hear the story straight from the proverbial horse's mouth. So Terry, thanks for hanging with me today. Oh, uh, so happy to be here. Um, and really grateful for the opportunity to share my story. I really haven't um, shared because I have been busy working and growing and pushing <laughs> and moving and uh, I, um, I haven't had the opportunity to share. Um, so thank you for having me. Yeah, well, it's a pleasure and a privilege. And I think a great place to start in the story is just to have you share a little bit about your, you know, your background, um, where you're located, how long you've been in the industry and what inspired you to get in. So give us a little background for those who don't know who Terry Core is, kind of where you located and what inspired you to get in the industry. Why don't we start there? Well, currently I um, am, I'll, I'll kind of go forward and back uh, this time. I have, um, I had four babies in four years starting in 2013. So I've been deep in the babies and <laughs> life changing i mean in it deep um, yeah you're in the sucker for punishment club um, just like me right four kids it took like so, me four kids four kids to realize are a lot easier to make than to raise right <laughs> yeah they are they say having the fourth is like what do they say um somebody handing you a baby when you're drowning the fourth is right. that's right yeah exactly. or a stone that's yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's the truth. Um, but it was time. We had a number of things coming up. My kids were starting to go to school. Um, we decided to make the move on the dream house, and it was just time to start a new season. Um, I had enjoyed being home with my babies, and it was time to reflect on, you know, what I'm going to do. I had had two careers. I'd previously been a loan officer in the early 2000s for about two years um, in a broker's office um, back when it was uh, one of the feasts, um, and we know how that uh, ended. Um, I right. got out of the industry at that time, like many others, not able to navigate at all what was happening. I did 100% refi, a lot of subprime. It was highly competitive, cutthroat, uh, just every man for himself. It didn't feel good at the time, but the money was a bit addicting. Um, but I did cut it off when I got married and it just got so turbulent and difficult um, and went into education, had babies, um, did other things. Um, but when I started reflecting on my life and my lifestyle and where I wanted to be, I knew I wasn't gonna go back into education um, and this is the skill that I had. So I was approaching it like a job or maybe even a career, um, got licensed. Uh, we didn't even be, we weren't even licensed back then. They let anybody come off the street, anybody. The wild, wild, wild west. Out. Uh, yeah. So that's like how I got the job. Um, back when we actually had um, uh, telemarketing, what do you call it, dialer systems and all that. Um, right. That's how I started back then. Um, Anyway, uh, I knew it was a skill I had that, um, that, and I was just not connected to the industry at all. I live in a totally different part of the country. So um, 
I found the most reputable company that I could um, with the most stable branch manager that I could find via a few realtor friends. I staged you know what, my comeback. You know, it's a dynamite, you know, it's a dynamite podcast when uh, your energy and the power of your story is toppling the webcam. You know, it's a powerful webcam story or rather podcast episode when that happens. <laughs> I love it. It's like reality TV at its finest, baby. You get the real, you get the yeah, raw. Sorry Bring about it. that, guys. <laughs> that uh, so, awesome. well, um, right don't now, don't you ever I'm apologize? Gonna... Don't you ever apologize for your power? That's just how powerful yeah. you are. <laughs> <laughs> so this, this is uh, the story. This is my actual comeback story, um, and it was a struggle because now it's not easier. I have four kids and a huge mortgage and. Mm. Um, my family has complicated health issues. My time is tapped. Um, so I really, uh, the stress was way more than anything I experienced in, uh, when I was single and, uh, mm. at a different stage in life. I was paying thousands. I think it was $3,500 a month in childcare for me to scrape by on a few loans a month at best, sometimes one, sometimes two. Um, and I gimped along and I came across Dorian. Yeah. So, I mean, there was quite a, a background there because, again, you were in this industry for, what, seven years or something like that in the early 2000s. And then you left due to the meltdown and everything else. You became a super mama of four kids. And then here we are, December of 2020, and you decide to come back in. You're like, you know, maybe there's... Maybe it's a different industry now. Maybe things have changed. And so there's an alignment, an aligning of stars, if you will, that had you come back. And when we met, you were seven months into your career, if I recall correctly. It was uh, June 22nd, 2021, that we had our, uh, you know, our connection. And at that time, literally, you were still wet behind the ears trying to get your legs underneath you, still wobbly in the knees. Tell us about uh, kind of the, the pain of the struggle, if you will. Like, you know, here you are now, you got four kids. You're not, you know, just rolling solo anymore. You've got uh, these four mouths to feed and all the emotional and practical needs that they have of you as their mom. Plus, now you're starting a new career again, learning everything that's required and getting up to speed. And then on top of that, you're trying, you're on 100% commission. You eat what you kill with no safety net. And then your your hubby uh, is you know struggling with uh, you know his health concerns, uh, going through cancer treatment and all stuff like that. So I mean you had all kinds of stuff thrown at you all at the same time, uh, going through all of this as you're trying to relaunch your career in the mortgage industry. Mandarin, um, I was near despair, and I was looking for an out. Um, and it was going to be a cover of kids or a cover of even my husband's health, or um, I was looking for an out because I thought I had come to realize that it wasn't possible, that I couldn't manage my life and I couldn't also have a successful career. Uh, I, I, in reflection, I was looking for like a, a, a scapegoat because I was going to have to say I couldn't do it. I couldn't pull it off. Um, so I was looking for an out and I was covering up the fact that my family actually needed me to show up financially in a really big way. And I was going to step out, change my family's lifestyle, um, and basically quit, not just like the business, but quit on myself, really the dreams and security that I had for my family. So I showed up in that space feeling a little hopeless. Yeah, so things were getting real, real quick, obviously. Tell us about what some of your biggest challenges were in getting your business off the ground and how those challenges impacted you in terms of you know, your biggest fears, worries, anxieties that started to bubble up um, or in some cases, I'm sure, erupt. Um, as those challenges were more formidable than you perhaps initially anticipated. Tell us about that. 
Well, um, you know, when you're working 100% commission, not only do you, um, you know, you're waiting on your, your check, but when your family is depending on you, you're digging a hole of thousands and thousands of dollars a month in childcare and expenses and, and all that type of thing. So that was a challenge. Every month that I wasn't making money, I was losing money in the thousands. And I think by the point I talked to you, Doran, I had lost more money than I had made trying to supplement my income with leads at $1,000 a month um, at um, a, a lower commission rate because I was under somebody else at, um, and then just the general having somebody clean my house because I was unavailable and uh, childcare for three littles. Um, like I was buried and, um, um, you know, not having the capacity to learn or go out and actually engage clients and realtors, um, just a complete, it, it was a struggle. It was just, it was just a struggle all around. And I had no map and I, I don't know how common this is, but I felt like I was on an Island and I'm one of, you know, the thousands at my company you put up or you disappear like the end. Um, mm. nobody's coming to rescue you. So I went, I think I found Jordan, I went, uh, I was on podcasts trying to find my soul, my, my anything, uh, Jesus, everything. And I just <laughs> bumped into Doran. I have never heard of him, just bumped into a podcast. Um, and I was like, this is like my language and my ear perked up. And then I listened to a couple more and I was like, these are my people. Uh, these are my people. Um, and like thirsty for water, I quickly uh, started researching and dialing in and um, scheduled a call and was like, tell me more, like it's possible. Like um, I can show up with all my integrity intact and um, I can do what I'm really good at, which is, you know, engaging with clients, you know, supporting people through the biggest uh, transaction of their life and uh, not be buried in, you know, smiling and dialing and hoping I throw enough numbers at the board to capture one or two things for the month. Um, and then starting over all at square one every right. month after I closed a couple. Yeah, no, that's definitely doing it the hard way. And uh, we're, we're definitely not fans of doing it the hard way here at Planet Prosper. We're all about the shortest path to the cash. Anyone who's watched or listened to our podcast for more than one episode, they know that to be true. That's a drum we beat like a cheap rap song and we're not about to stop. <laughs> we ain't done. We've just begun. But, you know, obviously the struggle was real for you at that time. Take us a step back before we get us connected to some of your biggest fears, um, because that's the human part of your story that I think people will really connect with. What were your some of your biggest fears um, before we got on the phone that you that had you reaching out for help? Um, you know, as a mother, um, I was dedicated to my family, and I had felt. Um, a real tug of war with taking a risk in um, spending my time and money um, back in the business. And I had done so, I thought methodically, um, these risks. And I realized uh, when I came to that point that like I had squandered my family's resources. I had shut the door on my kids dozens and dozens of times trying to hustle that one more deal, like literally closing the door. Like I have the visual in my mind mm. when I desperately am dialing to get one more deal to pay preschool tuition. The cost was high. Uh, additionally, um, uh, you know, to face my husband and tell him that like, I can't do it. It's just you, you know, like I'm gonna need you to pull us all the way through. I, 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 I'm, I'm not enough. Um, I, I'm just a stay at home mom, but I was, uh, I was really hustling for my worth and for my value. And I was a baby's breath of, you know, full, full quit and, at that time, I actually am not ready for your transition there. I went to my husband and, be, and I had to tell him, like, just trust me with one more thing, one more decision when we were already like literally negative, probably in our bank account. Like, I just need you to trust me with this one more decision, like 90 more days. 
Jordan, we said October. I don't know if you write it down. You write things down. We said October. I said, I have till October. That's mm-hmm. right. I remember. That was the breaking point. I'm actually sitting at the desk he was in. And I said, just give me till October. Um, we were incredibly resourceful using the last access that we needed to make the next right step. Um, and we threw it all in the ring. And... And it's true. I only just realized, I think last week that I have in the pipeline for last month and this month, each one of the months, it wasn't just a random one. Everybody knows you can get random one good month. (laughs) We've all done that. Um, But I have back to back months that um, are beyond my year to date. I, I doubled my year to date. Twice. Yeah, it's so. truly amazing. We're going to get into more details and the avalanche of awesome that's unleashed. But let's hold our horses for a moment because I think there's 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 value in really allowing ourselves to steep in the muck and mire of of the darkness we came from, so we can, you know, number one, reveal our humanity uh, that everyone else listening and watching can connect to in their own lives, the struggle in their own lives, but also uh, it just has us appreciate the light of coming out of that darkness that much more when we juxtapose them together side by side. So one of the things just to kind of drill deeper, I don't want to belabor the hell you were living in just a, you know three months ago, but it is really remarkable how far you've come in three months. So I think I, I would be remiss not to have you share one more thing, and that is the very real fear you had around your hubby going through multiple cancer treatments and you not having legs underneath you with your ability to provide for your four kids. Can you speak to that for a moment in terms of, um, you know, the very real fear that was there for you and how that impacted you day to day? Yeah, my husband, and uh, around the time I got back into the business, um, uh, at the beginning of the year, he was in chemo for lymphoma. This was his eighth round of um, cancer. We actually, I, I don't think I've even ever told you this story, um, for really many people, but early in our marriage, we had lost a home. Um, we short sold it, and we had, it was like the third round. He had been out of work, and um, we then went on uh, to many more seasons of struggle and had children with also a lot of struggle and um, we established ourselves, our career. Um, I wasn't working, um, but when we bought our new house, the voices in the back of my head was, you know how this is gonna end. This isn't gonna end well. Who comes back from cancer eight times? Mm. He's gonna die young. You're gonna have all these kids. You're gonna be foreclosed on. So this is the voice in my head that had me scrambling, scrambling, hustling so hard because I knew that I needed to plan for the long term to my success, but probably the people as well. Um, I needed. I needed some serious psychology. Um, I was so desperate that I could not close alone unless it was actual sheer grit and fight. I was terrified. I was going to read a piece of cycle that I had already done, but this time for kids and so. Yeah, it's one thing to go through it once, but then to have the fear of doing it again with such high stakes with dependence, for dependence, and not having the confidence, the know-how, the wherewithal to stand on your own two feet financially and all the impact of that, plus the fear of knowing what it was like to go through it the first time, compounding and pouring gasoline on that fear. I can only imagine that was a dark night of the soul, no doubt. And I remember when we uh, had our first conversation in June, you know, losing sleep multiple times a week, many times waking up at three in the morning and not being able to go back to sleep. So literally just getting out of bed at three in the morning and going to work, you know, that's a crazy mofo who wakes up that early to go to work because there's just nothing else to do but stare at the ceiling fan in the middle of the dark doing nothing uh, and certainly not sleeping. So the plight was real, no doubt. Uh, I think we've driven that point home. Let's, uh, Let's share a little bit about 
some of the things you tried, you've tried many different things. You mentioned that you tried buying leads. Um, you've, you know, we're obviously throwing a, a lot of yogurt at the fan, hoping something would stick. Tell us about, you know, some of the big things that you were uh, trying to get the thing off the runway that obviously was not working at the level you needed it to. Uh, Cause I have a feeling as you, as you uh, walk through this laundry list of things you tried, you're going to elicit in our audience a feeling of, yeah, I know what you mean. I'm there or I've been there. So give us a little bit of that laundry list, if you would. Uh, so I was pretty sure that I could do this without realtors. I can't tolerate that. I'm not going to be able to manage the calling and harassing me. I just want to do it on on my own, which I don't know if that's... Uh, uh, typical or unusual, but in my mind, I had a complete block. Like, I'm not going to be able to cooperatively work with realtors. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know what that's to be business. <laughs> yeah, you're not alone. You're certainly not alone there. Here we are. Someone, <laughs> someone, anybody watching this live, give us, uh, give us a comment in the comment section and let us know if uh, Terry's the only one. Something tells me she's not. But uh, yeah, that is certainly a common plight in this industry. And so, you know, you had obviously a lot of hesitation and uh, a lot of um, resistance to reaching out to realtors. You bought leads. Um, I'm assuming you, you, you know, tried your hand at some cold calling. Uh, is that an accurate assessment? Yes, I completely futile attempts at uh, Facebook and, you know, my Fear, network fear, and the realtors in my neighborhood. Um, but not only um, my my disarming smile did not, uh, you know, was not a good enough cover for the truth is I was pretty sure I didn't have anything to offer realtors, um, and I was pretty sure that I didn't like them. It's interesting because I really um, I would normally be really upset when somebody said I don't like them, whoever them may be, and I find that incredibly offensive. But for some reason, I decided it was okay that I didn't like them. Um, uh, so I had a lot of um, work I needed to do to have any opportunity to go to the next level. So I mean, you tried the cold calling uh, these realtors. You didn't even want to make the overture because number one, they're prima donnas, they're drama queens, they're arrogant, they're apathetic, they're flaky, you know, all those different adjectives that you want to use depending on your preference. Uh, but on top of that, then you also dropped a ton of dough on a bunch of crap leads off the internet that didn't convert. That Those were, were Facebook leads, is that right? Realtor.com called Off City. It's similar to Lipizilla. Okay. I think it's a little more so, popular. Yeah, so online, <laughs> online opt-in leads on uh, on Zillow. Mm -hmm. Similar to Zillow. Realtor.com. Realtor okay. Zillow. Yeah. So similar yeah. idea. And then, you know, obviously that didn't pan out very well because, you know, if you're anything like most people who've done that, uh, it's a hundred leads to maybe convert one. Were you able to convert any of those leads or not so much? Those were my, oh uh, yeah, I did. Um, and I, I think I, uh, yeah, I definitely did because I was taking hundreds of leads um, and making, I mean, back in the day, we used to do like 300 calls a day. Like I was well trained in the dialing. Right. Um, so I put my time in. And yeah, I took out a loan or two every month. Uh, painful as it was, I did take out a loan or two and I didn't ask for wheelchair for any of those. Right. It wasn't pretty at the end of the day because you have to buy 100 or 200 leads just to close one loan. That all cuts out of your margins at the end of the day off your profit, not to mention the hundreds of hours that you invested in all the duds just to find the one stud. Right. So you're sifting through a mountain of gravel just to find a few gold nuggets. So you can imagine, folks, uh, how frustrated Terry was into coming into the call with me after trying all these different things and being exasperated on and literally a hair's breadth away from just calling it quits, but not knowing what else to do and knowing that she had a very uh, distinct and severe breaking point within a very short period of time if she didn't crack the code on this. So that's where we found Terry. June 22nd, 2021. I know the exact date because I looked it up. And 
so we have obviously this very real honest conversation about where you're at and what's not working and consequence of that problem now and the consequence of that problem persisting in the future and the ramifications what's really at stake and obviously there was a lot at stake um such that you said screw it let's do it and invest in yourself with, with my program in spite of the fact of not having a penny to your name in spite of the fact of having to enroll your hubby into you know being bank of hubby just one more time, one last decision, you know, pulling out the stops just one last time, uh, which, you know, it's easier said than done when you've gone through what you've gone through. Tell us about, you know, cause you were on the ledge, right? You were on the precipice of like, Oh shit. Like I'm really going to invest this kind of money in myself to, you know, take one more swing at this. Um, and obviously you weren't in a place where you can afford to fail by any stretch. Tell us about, your biggest fears when you're literally on the edge of that precipice and about to get take out the or in this case have your hubby pull out the credit card i mean i was literally physically sick i was physically sick um, you know it was like hard to swallow i don't know if that's anxiety or what i generally don't have anybody but like hard to swallow and not like what day i mean daily and that's why i didn't sleep like getting up at 3 a.m. was not one time thing, it was a daily thing. I did not sleep. I had migraines most days. Um, from CMJ coaching my straws. I mean, I like to have a carefree personality, but I was dying. I was like terrified. Um, terrified of didn't let my family down, terrified of even my husband's. He really believes in me. He really trusts me. And um, I just, it was physical. It was physical, the the pressure and the fear. Yeah, and so that's that's where you were, you know, for really unvarnished, pulling off the sugar coating. That's where you were the moment you're uh, literally getting your hubby to, you know, pull out the credit card and spend money you didn't have to invest in yourself. And obviously, you know, the rest is history. Fast forward three months, uh, obviously lots has happened. We're going to get into that in a moment, but tell me about what it was like getting on the other side. You said, screw it, let's do it. You invest in yourself. We onboard you onto Planet Prosper and you dive into the coaching and you're listening to the modules. You're showing up to the Q&A calls Tell us about some of the stuff, maybe one or two things that you heard or that you were being told to do that you're like, are you kidding me? You really think that's going to work? Seriously? Tell us about the unvarnished truth of maybe just one thing that you were getting coached to do that you're like, you got to be kidding me. Well, I was waiting for the magic uh, to happen where they were going to like hand over the keys to the kingdom um, that I had paid for with my last dollars or dollars I didn't have. Um, and what was asked of me was um, to be pretty reflective on my personal belief system, not about realtors, but actually about myself. Mm. My all parts of Carrie Core, my body, my mind, my spirit. We weren't even talking about my business. At least I didn't hear until, I don't know, a while later. There was so much to clean up and to reorganize and to resolve from the limiting beliefs that I had that results were not even remotely within my vicinity because of my own beliefs. You said, or somebody, I'm pretty sure you said, um, your results will not exceed your expectations. My expectation was not good. I was beat down. I was dark. I was tired. I was sick, literally sick um, and desperate. It's not a great place to be for, for results. No. Um, and then you wanted me to write out, like, you know, my belief system and my philosophy of the people I work with and, uh, you know, digging into, uh, you know, things people had told me that I believe that were true or not true or things I told myself that were true or not true. Uh, it's like, I don't have mine. So these are the luxuries. You understand? <laughs> I'm about to lose everything. Just give me I mean, some freaking strategy, will you? 
<laughs> Stop telling me about this mindset woo-woo crap. Just give me some strategy, right? Yeah, I'm a bit of an inner nonsense. I, if anything, before, during, and now, continues to be, I am tenacious, and I am crappy, and um, I don't have time for fluff. I usually speak directly and clearly. Um, so it's difficult for me to put a pause and reflect at all that I may be responsible for my current situation um, to realize that I alone will decide mm-hmm. the outcome in coming months. And I have all access and power to do so. Um, it's actually, it was, I don't know, is it here or here? Or all of the above. Um, uh, spend a lot of work to do to get out of my own way. What's one belief, one limiting belief that you can recollect that you were holding on to, believing to be true, that was just once we shone, shone a light on it, shone the light of truth on it, you realize it was just complete BS and was holding you back. And what, what was the new belief that you embraced that, that set you free? There were several, but um, the, the primary belief um, though I had it under deep, deep lock and key that I'm not sure really hardly anyone knew is because I think I usually show up confident, confident and capable and whatnot, but I was in a hustle to make sure nobody found out that I'm a fraud and that uh, I don't know and that, uh, you know, I'm not worth it. And I don't know if those are all the same, but for me, my entire hustle, almost everything I was doing is that I'm not professional and that I don't know and that I'm not working hard enough. I'm not smart enough, uh, you know, to an organizer. I don't know, the list could probably go on and on of all the things that I um, was hustling to make sure nobody found out that I couldn't. <laughs> yeah. Uh, obviously, this is a very human plight and uh you know, you're very, very much not alone there, but it's easy to feel like you're alone and try and be a lone soldier doing all this stuff yourself, trying to unravel this net's, rat's nest yourself it tends to be a, 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 a fool's errand because when we're inside the bottle, it's hard to see the label from inside the bottle. We need that, that added sight and someone to shine the light on our blind spots. So that's one of the powerful things that coaching provides is to shine the light on our blind spots so we can see what we normally wouldn't be able to see. Tell us about the new belief that you embraced after you impeached the lie that you're not enough. I mean, I'm sure it's been said many times, but I really can't overstate the affirmation um, that I created, not randomly, but I clicked out of the sky or Googled, but the ones that actually manifested out of working through my limiting beliefs and the lies that I had told myself or believed. And the primary one that I uh, reference every day, multiple times a day, and have edited for my children uh, as well, um, that has really kept me afloat is that I have God-given superpowers that are propelling me into my purpose. And more and more, I am being moved into my calling. Wow. Um, and it keeps me on track. It keeps me positive. It makes things that would normally really feel like you set back. Um, just, I just like can flutter along and keep moving because cause he's got me. I'm his vessel. I know I'm in my purpose. I know I'm on a calling. And, and it just changed everything. Even just the one affirmation. Uh, even still, uh, more than 90 days later, that's the primary one. I edit and change the other ones that I feel needed. Um, but I, my kids say it too. I'm smart. I'm kind. I have God-given superpowers. I can do anything. And we high-five every day <laughs> when I drop them off. Um, but sometimes they're coming out of the car and the drop-offs or pick-up people are starting to say, I can do anything. Um, and I feel so on purpose. Wow. And I'm not... I'm, I'm, I've let go of any um, hesitation that I've had about my ability. It's actually, I believe it's not my ability. I'm just a vessel of yeah. 
That is so beautiful, Terry. I got goosebumps, God bumps, having you just share that because that is truly the difference that makes the difference. You know, when we embrace, first of all, to come into the light of truth, to have the awareness, to see the weed in our garden, but then to invoke the power of choice to realize that we're called to be a wise and prudent gardener our garden. And if we see a weed in the garden, you don't just sit back and say, oh, hopefully someone will take care of that for me. No, you pull the freaking weed or it's going to take your freaking garden, right? So there's there's just so much power in you claiming that role in your life to be that prudent gardener of your mind and to plant that seed of truth. And now it's not just setting you free, but it's setting up this incredible posterity of power for your people, for your, for your kids. And chances are kids, kids, what an amazing legacy, man, that fires me up. That is amazing. So, you know, I'm just beyond jacked and stacked to, uh, to just consider the ramifications and the impact and the, the legacy, the legendary legacy that's going to pass on to future generations, not just to mention your own life, and the impact it's already making in your own life. Here we are now, literally three months after you launched on Planet Prosper. Tell us about what's happened since then. Um, what? Give us a little bit of the Coles Notes version of what we did to help you make your annual income. Because when we talked June 22nd, you were on track literally this year to make 30K gross, 20K net. We have all the numbers. We checked them twice. That was your trajectory for 2021. What what was the kind of maybe one, two, three steps we helped you take uh, in terms of you know the, the process? But then let's really also focus on the product or the, the outcome that was produced where you were able to make your annual income, your monthly income. Um, you know, change my thinking, clean it up by weeds and whatnot. I felt, I felt the shift when I cut my weed stores. Um, you know, it didn't feed me much, but it fed me something. It gave me something to do. I was, you know, trying. If I just pulled more, if I had more time, if I just had better rates, you know, with something. But um, I had gotten the distinction that whatever I was doing, spending time on investments, moving me either more towards my goal. Um, or away from my goal. And that was not something that was moving my business in the direction that I wanted to go. Beyond um, finances, if I thought I knew what they were, but I didn't want to be in business with people I don't like and I don't trust. That annoying. That's actually what I was really saying. And of course, I mean, it seems like people, not all realtors are, you know, whatever our typical stereotype is. Um, and I got my lease store. And stopped paying that money, and I was a little scared. But um, I, you know, I just ripped off the bandaid, and it was time. It was go time. Uh, it was go time, and I decided I was going to do this. Um, anyone, um, I chose like the best and the brightest in my area. My branch manager was like, Terry, um, I don't think that's a good place to start. You know, maybe you should start you know, with the bottom feeders. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah, like your friends, like, who do you think you are? Like, you can't go to so and so, you know, who's top producer. And, um, but you know what? I suspended all this belief. I move forward with um, just clarity um, or ignorance. Um, at the time, I had no idea uh, that it was really going to work, but I just chose to follow the protocol. I see my stuff in the sort of done better, but I didn't add to it. I didn't do anything different. I didn't put my own thoughts on it, which then had me pluck uh, 20 of the best, you know, producing um, realtors in my area. Then I scouted them, like, Ooh, do I think I would like them? I threw some out, sort of some, you know, just to see, you know, I truly thought of it like, I want to be into this people like me who like are hustlers, are thoughtful, are trustworthy, um, are fun. I, I have fun too. Like I miss you. It's all there. My, <laughs> Life um, is too short not to be working with people who are fun. So amen to that, sister. And and I'm for it. Yeah. I went all in. Fun, hardworking, hustling, growth-minded, successful realtors in your market doing 20 plus transactions a year. 
right? Buyer side transactions. And then what, what was the next step? Give us the Coles notes. We started reading up to me. Yeah, you loaded. After I was like, okay, I'm going to tell you like a detail. Yeah, you, so you loaded them into the realtor traction campaign, right? All of a sudden they start responding. And then what happened next? I'm so green that I don't even realize they are responding to me um, because it's not in the place I thought that I'm going to do this, but I'm like totally delayed in like getting back to them. I like days or almost a week or something, like, but they're responding uh, via text to me a call the night I bumped into my messages, sending three, just waiting for me to show up. Um, that very night, I was by discovery meeting. In one night, um, most people haven't done was, five. Most people haven't had five realtor meetings in the last two months, let alone in one night. Just saying. One night. Yeah. And that was me, like jumping along, like not even being right. responsive or reading the fine print and knowing what I'm doing. I just was, you right. know, ready, fire, aim. bumping around. Yeah. I think that week I scheduled all five, maybe two canceled, three. I am still in relationship with that are sending me business, if not daily, definitely weekly. One of those, just from the discovery meeting, not a show and tell, sent me four deals by the time I got back to my desk that day. That's, That's incredible. That's exaggeration. Um, but he is keeping me so busy um, with clients that are more than tripling the loan amount that I was working before my lead source, like one client. And now I have a pipeline full and I don't know, probably 40 pre-approvals for. I mean, this is really, uh, that, that's just one. Um, a couple, <laughs> a couple um, that are now my VIP were people that I had already known, but I just showed up different. Or I had done a transaction with them, or I, they were sort of in my sphere, but I just showed up different and engaged them and uh, shared with them um, the new tool chest that I had. And now I'm a girl. They wouldn't go anywhere else. No brainer of the year. Yeah, it's the no brainer <laughs> of the year. Why would they settle for anything less than the core team? when they've got an awesome stack of awesome that Terry brings to the table, or they can go with the lone leech they've been working with. It's the no brainer of the year. So that's amazing, Terry. You booked five appointments in one night. Uh, you didn't have to do any cold calling. You didn't have to do any begging or groveling or bribing or chasing. Just load those 20 top producing realtors into our realtor traction campaign. Bada bing, bada boom, you're booking appointments with top producing agents like a hot knife through butter. And then three of those of those five meetings culminated into solid, what we call VIP partnerships, one of which has been sending you an av absolute avalanche of business. The, the other two certainly have been steady as well. Tell us about the difference that's made, because obviously the better quality leads easier to convert higher average commission per deal you said three times the average loan size is the deals that were coming through your paid lead source so uh, you're making three times the money for three times less work probably even five times less work and um, obviously much more grateful more good to send referrals have you found that to be true absolutely even before i close their month or city referrals um they documents over their in file they're organized it's like it, it, it's absolutely true it's like life attracts light like this realtor is um in a very high producing high frequency vibration the clients he attracts he's attracting are the same like they have their stuff together i'm not going to dark color on my floor they're sending me a file and it's labeled all the pages are there like i <laughs> I'm like, it's my heaven. Um, you know, compared to the garbage I was sifting through before, um, you know, nothing against those clients, but they just weren't of the same caliber that allowed me to operate at this higher um, frequency. So, um, you know, it just, it, it was completely transformative um, to choose to fly with the eagle. Like, I literally chose. I just chose. Yeah. I have a, a, 
a coach that's telling me that I could, that I was completely capable and this is what you're going to do and here are the next steps. Sometimes I didn't even know the next step. I was in the action that I was supposed to be in and I don't even know what's going to happen next. And at some point I just suspended disbelief in the process in me when I was feeling uh, fear, discomfort. I saw other people having their breakthrough and um, so I was able to turn forward in, in faith and uh, uh, in, in confidence, knowing that whatever I was going to bump into, I had access to great coaches and resources that were going to help me remember you. Um, I didn't have to know everything, and I surely didn't do everything. I surely was just willing. Here you are now, literally three months later. When we talked June 22nd, you were doing about one deal a month. You had a little bit of a pop that month. I think the pipeline was like five, but then nothing else in the pipe beyond that. And they were the itty bitty little trailer park loans versus the juicy, you know, mm -hmm. higher, uh, higher quality type of clients that you have now. Tell us about how life has changed for you now. Um, obviously, your income has changed, changed tremendously. Your pipeline has changed tremendously. Give us a, a little peephole into Terry Core's world. And in terms of like, you know, what, what is your life like now, just three months later compared to, you know, the hell you were in three months ago? Um, I think the number one thing is I've taken all control back. <clears throat> and I mean, um, I can literally, uh, actually, one of my uh, VIP partners was just harassing me. And I just decided, even before I really understood the gravity, and I said, uh, from here, I think you need to choose someone else since you know more about pre approvals and when to lock and you know all the things you're telling me to, to do. And I just I said, you know, find someone else. Bless, uh, bless and release is what we call the terminology for that. Uh, yeah. Bless and release just, or F the frick I off. <laughs> Here's the thing she gave me a little bit of room and then she came back and she apologized. Ah, nothing like a little humble pie. I mean, and I respect her so much for coming back and not just walking away. I mean, I would fully have been 100% sure I would never see her number on my phone again. Um, and turns out, she what shook out uh, from me calling it was somebody who I really respect, that I actually like, that I can be transparent with. I tell her the truth. I tell her if I've made a mistake. I tell her if things are not what she thinks they are. I we are clear. Clear, there is kind, and she's on food. She knows she can trust me, and I trust her. Like, we clean it up. Wow. Um, and now she's a great partner. So now you're in the driver's seat. Now you're in control. Now you're no longer the tail, you're the head. Now you're no longer someone's lone bitch. Now you're running the show the way you want it to be. So obviously, that's huge. Tell me how, what, what are you most grateful for and most excited about in your life now, now that you've turned your annual income into your monthly income and you're in the driver's seat? What are you most grateful for, most excited about? I really love the fact that if my pipe was, pipeline was wiped out today, I know I could bring it right back in 30 days. Wow. Just like that. I, I know for sure, 100%. So the fear of my next deal, or the realtor's not gonna like me anymore, or they're gonna talk about me if I don't give them what they want or do what they want or closing like zero. Um, I have a hundred percent confidence where my next loan, uh, next partner is coming from. I have no fear. Uh, or if we go to seven again, because they used to be. Um, I'm gonna be okay. Uh, it's a great feeling. That's amazing. Absolutely freedom to be who I am and just be myself fully and do what I'm good at. Um, and what I'm excited about the most, you know, I love making these realtor partners. Now I'm real. Um, <laughs> no, I found a community of people <laughs> that, um, that I like and that I have fun with and I look forward to talking to you. And I answer every time, uh, not because I'm going to get one more deal, but because I like her. And I want to talk to her, and we're moving things forward, and we're planning on our what's next meeting. Um, so I built a community um, of people that are helping me move forward. Uh, so I love that. And of course, I'm really excited. We're moving into our new dream house. 
have no hesitation mm. uh, that I will, with my husband preferably, or without him, should the story go that way. I will pay that mortgage and my kids will grow up there and the trees will get bigger and it's a single story uh, uh, and I will bring my grandkids in there and I'll be okay. Okay. I just felt emotion rise up because that is such, that is such a game changer when you don't have to live in fear anymore. What's it like to not have to live in fear anymore? I guess, I guess it's freedom. It's like that, it's a taste of freedom that I can create and design uh, whatever. Yeah. I want whatever I choose, whatever I need, um, whatever direction I want to go. Like this is this is all within uh, my grasp, and that if I choose to um, close a million a month or five million a month, I know that I can I can you know turn the volume up, turn the volume down, like and. Um, I can create a team in just a few short months. I surrounded myself with people that I like and trust and enjoy working with. Um, I feel all free. Mm. I am beyond overjoyed and blessed to see you blossom and come alive and take flight. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. as we transition here, Terry, I just want to honor you for your courage, for your grit, for your forthright, unvarnished, authentic you, uh, the truth telling you, the integrous you, the I'll do it because it's the right thing to do, do not because it's the easy thing to do. Uh, and also just your desire to, the desire is probably not the right word. It's more like your willingness, your willingness to be, coachable, even when it freaking hurts, even when it's the hardest thing that you're facing in the moment, uh, to dig deep, you know, you have real soul substance that's coming from your coach. And so I just salute you. Um, and I just want to honor you for, uh, for being you and I'm beyond excited. So sky's the limit, but just super blessed and grateful to be on the journey with you. Uh, uh my life is actually unrecognizable from 90 days ago it, it, it really is um and the truth is i gotta drink so much bigger i, I gotta drink so much bigger <laughs> I, I, i'm sometimes journaling on that i got i got i mean what that was really reaching when i set my goals um uh, three months ago and when we were wrapping up um whatever we could go I, I was stunned that i had set what i thought was a completely audacious uh goal uh, and I, I had just hammered it out uh, in September and was already, I mean, already halfway there in October. Um, I got to do bigger. Well, you, so yeah, bigger. I mean, your, your vision was to do 30 G's a month. That was your big, hairy, audacious dream to do 30 G's a month. And that was three months ago. You were thinking like, man, I'd be happy if I get there within a few years. Here we are three months later mm -hmm. and you're going to be superseding that. And again, you're just getting warmed up. The pipeline's only growing. And you know, that's from five appointments booked and three solid partners. Come on now. I mean, you literally have your hand on the faucet to turn it on or off at will. And I, feel and see and hear total uh, congruence in your voice. When you say, I feel I'm in control, like we feel it. There's just no if for ands or buts about it. It's like total congruence. So I know that that's your truth because you have lived it and you know how to do the rinse, wash and repeat it well. So I'm just, again, just super excited for you. So if you're watching this or listening to this, guys, and you're inspired by Terry's story, even if, if you're not, you probably don't have a pulse because come on now. I mean, this is just incredible to see how far she's come in such a short period of time. And the truth is, if she can do it, you can do it. She's no smarter than you. She's no better than you. She might have a little bit more grit because come on now to ha ha get kicked off audio twice in this podcast. You got to be knowing she's one 
you know, too much grit to quit mofo. But the cool thing is we've done interviews over the years like this many, many times. Terry's not the only one. Uh, she's one of many. And so this is not like it, it's an anomaly. Welcome to just another day on Planet Prosper. That's just how we roll. But if you're listening to this, watching this, you're like, man, I'm inspired by Terry's story. I want that to be my story. I want to take my annual income and make it my monthly income. Or maybe your vision, your desire isn't even that, you know, that, that lavish. Maybe it's you want to increase your income by an extra 100000 or an extra you know, 200,000, whatever that looks like to you. Or maybe it's you want to increase your income while working less hours. Maybe you want to get your life back. Maybe you're working crazy hours. You want to get your life back. You want to streamline and simplify and uh, earn more while working less and enjoy your best life, the blessed life, living on purpose with purpose and just get your life back, get your freedom back, get your sanity back. Whatever that looks like to you, if you're watching this and you're wanting to find out how you can explore the process of having our systems, our tools, our proven process. I invite you to do the very same thing that Terry did just three months ago. And that is to book a breakthrough call where we will lift up the hood on your business. We're gonna look at what's working, what's not working, where you're at now in your business, where you wanna take it. And if we can help you create a breakthrough, by all means, we'll show you what that looks like. If not, frankly, we'll be the very first person to, pa to pass on our services. We have probably 20% of the conversations don't even call me into an offer because it's just not the right fit. They're not that the kind of person we can help. So when I say that, I, I, I'm meaning it. It's not just some you know sales BS. Uh, you know, where someone's just got sales breath halitosis trying to get a sale. This is not a sales call. This is a breakthrough call. This is an honest conversation to see if we can help you. And if we have the right fit, we'll show you what that looks like. Either way, though, you'll leave the meeting with massive value, massive clarity. And chances are we're going to have a lot of fun as well because take it from uh, the one and only Terry Core herself. We like to have a lot of fun, don't we, Terry? We do. <laughs> we do. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. And if you wouldn't mind also just sharing uh, whatever your thought was and also to just to stack, if someone is um, a fence and they're like, Dorn, it sounds cool, but I don't have the money or it sounds cool, but, you know, I need to, uh, you know, to close some more loans so I have some money to invest in myself or it sounds cool, but maybe I'll wait till the new year. Uh, what would you say to someone like that, plus whatever else you were about to talk about? I was only mentioning that we do have a lot of fun. Uh, the energy is high, and um, for the most part, a lot of laughter and sometimes some tears uh, whatnot, but um, definitely a safe place to show up exactly where you are. Um, I had several times where I had setbacks. Uh, and the albeit or desperation uh, popped right back up, and I reached out, and um, uh, with no judgment, and I was popped right back up, uh, and uh, was able to get right back in the game. Um, you know, our old habits don't just disappear and never come back. Um, you know, I just think for some reason today, freedom is really, uh, you know, when you're a prisoner of fear, you don't come out of prison later. You know, when you're in prison and you're trying to get out right now, you know, I there's no, there, there's no prisoner of that is, you know, waiting for a, a, a clear opportunity for the to unlock the door. Like the door is open, like walk through, um, you know, access to whatever you want is really on the other side um, if you're willing and coachable. You will take a real cozy with the discomfort though because it's not going to be like anything you've done before. The discomfort was tough. You know, um, I have to get used to that and I actually learned that when I'm in discomfort, a lot of times I'm right on track because that's my growth. Um, if there's no discomfort, I'm actually not growing. I'm not learning. I'm with. Um, so the internal program I say is a discomfort, but I'm going to love it like we do um, in the gym uh, when we are training our bodies. You know, you're not going to be looking or feeling any better. It's not the discomfort. Um, so it's okay to feel uncomfortable um, uh, because, you know, the results you want to see are actually just right there. They're right there. 
I couldn't have said it better myself. I'm so grateful to have this time with you, Terry, and share your story with the world, uh, our community, and uh, our podcast listeners. And I have no doubt we're going to get some amazing comments and uh, feedback from this. So those of you who are listening, watching this, if you're on 100% commission, you eat what you kill with no safety net, you're making 80 basis points or higher, and you're wanting to create a massive quantum leap breakthrough in your business, working smarter, not harder, Book a call, mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. It's exactly the first step that Terry took that had her create an absolute transformation in her life, as you just heard. And so if you're ready for a transformation in your life, go ahead and book the call. And let's see if we have the right fit to help you. So we want to make sure that we hear your story and see if we can connect the dots to have Terry's story become your story in your own unique way. And that's really what's amazing about what we're able to do for people is have it be custom tailored for your situation. So Terry, just thank you again. So appreciate you. Uh, There's no words to express the joy of witnessing your transformation and breakthrough, but I'm just very, very grateful to be a part of it. So thank you. Um, thank you so much. I, I really unimaginable, um, to be here and to be in a space just 90 days later to be able to share with others, um, um, the cultivation of success in such a short time. Like, who knew? This seems just ridiculous, honestly. Um, but thank you so much for having me. It's been such a pleasure and an honor. And how good can you handle it? That is the question. How good can you handle it? You might as well get used to stretching yourself out of the comfort zone to expand your receptivity to an avalanche of awesome in your life because we're just getting warmed up. So get ready to master the growing of your receiving muscle because that's absolutely what you're going to need to receive the avalanche of awesome that's coming your way. We're just getting warmed up, baby. That makes perfect sense. Thank you. <laughs> uh, all right, you guys, thank you for watching. We just shared with you Terry Core story on how she turned her annual income into her monthly income in just three short months. If you're wanting to explore how we can help you do likewise, book a call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Be blessed, y'all. We'll see you on the next episode. Peace.